Okay, so with those torqued down 30 foot pounds, um, our engine is timed. I um, just want to caution it doesn't hurt to double and triple check, check four times, five times. Um, make sure everything is exactly how it's supposed to be. Like I say, when you turn that key, you'll know right away that it's not right. Uh, and it's a lot of work. I've had to do it before, go back and retime it again, and it really pisses you off after you get everything back together. You say, oh my God. Uh, anyway, so we remove our, all our time and stuff, our blocks, our um, pin in the transmission, get all that out of the way, and then we're going to put our covers back on. Now, when you take this out or your tool off, you know, that's going to drop down. Um, you know, don't worry about it too much. And you just push that back up. Nothing else should move when you slide your timing cover on. Uh, you know, it should be pretty well set. But we're going to go ahead and slide the timing cover on both sides. And uh, if you haven't done so, go ahead and um, put your motor mount bolts back in. Don't forget those. Don't forget your uh, the timing bolt that you took out of here, out of your head. Put that back. Um, and anyway, so that's what we're going to work on next. We got to clean this up a little bit better uh, and put our front covers on. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll move on and see what's next. Okay, so I got all my covers back on, my gaskets on here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stick the chain tensioner in up in here next, and then I'm going to change the valley pan cover. That's pretty straightforward. Um, I ordered this, got supposedly a reinforced gasket or something instead of a plain old BMW gasket. Uh, so anyway, you got to take the knock sensors, or you don't have to, but it's a whole lot easier to take the knock, knock sensors off of one side, uh, give you more room in there. And, you know, just take it out, put it back in. Now, I warn people, I use impacts. Um, I love impacts. I could never go back to not using them. And you take stuff apart. I take stuff apart. I use an impact. Put it back together. These things are all aluminum. And it doesn't take much to strip the bolts out. You get a couple strip bolts and something like that, and you got a nightmare. So... I don't use the impact to put things back together. Um, you know, sometimes if it's a long bolt, I'll run it close with the impact and then, you know, torque it down. And again, all these torque specs are on my website. But at any rate, that's what we're going to do next. We're going to do the, the chain tensioner and the valley pan. So I got the valley pan off and I just wanted to point something out. Um, see how there's no antifreeze in there last thing you want to do is take any aluminum block and start it up with no protection like that and by the time you dump the water in the over in the uh, reservoir and let it flow through a lot of this is left dry up here when you first start it up now if you don't remove the head there's some in there but what I'm going to point out, and if you keep watching, I'll show you how I make sure this is actually full of antifreeze. If you look down here in the water pump, this is a hole straight through to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to assure that it is actually full of antifreeze or, you know, some type of protection water so you don't overheat it. Uh, because you start it and run it, by the time antifreeze gets in here, the cylinder walls already overheat so anyway it's kind of an important thing um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on and we'll move on to see what's next so the valley pan covers on now um, I don't know why they they got these little plugs in the holes they don't give you new plugs <laughs> um, I would suggest just buying a new cover because they're plastic and they've been heated under there for who knows how many years, how many of yours has. When you try to, try to take them off, they just break up. Another thing to begin with, um, 
Whenever you do anything automotive like this, always try to tighten the bolts down in a sequential order, like across one and then, you know, back and forth across each way as an X patterns. Uh, and always start from the middle. Um, that's just the proper way to do it. You lay the metal out flat instead of trying to bunch it up, especially when you start talking about aluminum and things like that. Uh, but anyway, you know, after you get all those bolts tight, go back and recheck them because there's a lot of them. And once you tighten them all down, then you go back and it makes the other ones loose again. So what we're going to do next is we're going to stick the water pump on um, and put our belt tensioner back on. And it's much easier to put that belt on right here where you got all this kind of room. So that's the next things we're going to do is we're going to got to stick the two uh, pipes in there, of course. Now, I put new O-rings in, and sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to slide on there. And um, I'll put just a dab of grease and on my finger and rub it around the rubber. Now, everybody will tell you that grease deteriorates the rubber, but at any rate, in my opinion, that a little bit of grease one time is not going to completely deteriorate the rubber. But just, it's up to you, you know, the correct way you're not supposed to. You know, you can use uh, non petroleum Vaseline or different things like that also. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and stick those tubes in. I'm going to put the water pump on. And I'm going to put the belt back on. And we're getting somewhere. And then we'll move on and see what's next. Okay, so we got the water pump, belt on, tensioner, all that bit. Um, I promised the story of why I was changing the head gasket. If you notice, the water pump looks brand new. So I had a really bad day. And thank you for not commenting because I know it's happened to other people but anyway if you notice I got tape on the intake manifold here I thought the water pump was leaking I just opened the hood I was losing fluid and I saw antifreeze dripping off the water pump I said oh the bearings bad on the water pump god damn it so I ordered a new water pump when I started pay taking it apart I realized it was the valley pan cover and the antifreeze was running out the front so I have fixed these valley pan covers using a forma gasket put a real nice bead on there stick it back on and it, it's fine but anyway what I did was I did all that and I said you know I'm just gonna stick the new water pump on there which I did put it all back together started it up and hear this big loud knocking noise so what happened was is a washer fell down in the intake hole and went down in the cylinder now <laughs> luckily enough it didn't damage anything but of course I had to pull the head off to get it off so what started out as a $45 valley pan a couple hours of work ended up the water pump head gasket <laughs> valley pan close to $700 and two days work so talk about bad days I'm going to write that one off for never again that's why there's tape on the intake holes now so anyway we're going to move on to the next step which is the intake manifold now just make sure all your plugs that go there like your knock sensors are, are there and nothing is in the way now I can take my tape off and I can lay my intake manifold back on and when you do it you remember how you took it apart how it had the, the spring-loaded thing that went in here so when you do it you just set the valve the intake manifold on here and you have to kind of work that in there for your pollution as part of your pollution control or whatever like that anyway um so we're going to stick the intake manifold on there next and we only have a couple more things and i'll show you how to add the antifreeze in there to make sure you have a good flow and we'll see what we got 
Okay, so I stuck my oilers on there both sides. They're pretty much only go on one way. Next, I'm going to stick the valve cover on. Now, the only thing you have to take note in the back, there's these half moon cutouts. You're supposed to put a little bit of uh, form a gasket on the, on the uh, rubber of the half moons. And you put a little dab here and here to help with the sealing of the uh, valve cover gasket. So I'm going to put both valve cover gaskets on. I'm going to go ahead and stick the fuel rail back in and stick my coil packs in. And then I'll show you what we got to do next. We almost got it. So I think it's all back together. Just a couple of things. The one thing what I told you about filling it, I leave this radiator hose open. Now if you dump antifreeze down in the hose until it fills up, it goes down in here to to the uh, the crossover tube in the back, and it supplies antifreeze all inside the block. Um, you know everything's pretty much plug and play. You just got to find the right plug for it. You know, double check yourself one more time. And when you first start it up, you're, it's normal for it to miss a little bit. Don't give it gas. Just let it. You know, sit there and miss and work its way out, and it'll it'll come back. Anyway, you have a nice day, and be sure to subscribe. I got a lot of other videos for BMW stuff. Thank you very much.